For two and a half days, GlassCon Global participants took part in discussions and debates covering some of the industry's most important issues. I'm Ellen Rogers, and welcome to this month's special event newscast. And I'm Nick Sandennis. Today we're bringing you a look at three unique sessions. One that's focused on university curriculum, another on economics, and lastly, we're looking at one of the biggest industry topics, and we do mean big. Let's start by heading back to school. Mick Patterson moderated a panel that talked about stimulating glass innovation. We spoke with Mick and learned more about what the industry can do to bring that glass and facade education to the university level. Well, the focus was on, uh, was on education and, uh, and how the academic environment can influence uh, the kinds of issues that we're facing in the built environment. Uh, and sort of addressing the issues of the relationship between education and, our, and industry and the built environment, I guess you would say, and sort of the causal uh, relationship there. Is, is, is the educational, uh, are the educational programs an opportunity to bring change, to, to create change? And I think the consensus was, yeah, that is an opportunity. We are lagging, uh, obviously, behind the European programs uh, where they have facade degree programs in place already. We barely have uh, a facade uh, class that can be taken at you know any of the schools. I, I think even more to the point are the collaborations that, that can occur between education and industry. This is something that, that you know is really an opportunity waiting to happen. We need to find out, out a way to begin to catalyze and facilitate these, these kind of collaborations. The words love and economists usually don't go together, but they did when Audubon Basu who today we called the economist who loved me and gave a global perspective on economics. Anuban is with Sage Policy Consulting Group and he talked about some of what's happening in construction employment. At 150,000 jobs is less than what we saw a few months ago when the average was around 225,000, but that doesn't worry me. Why? Because the unemployment rate in America is so low. It's hard to find workers. It's not just about labor demand, it's also about labor supply. The construction unemployment rate, the unemployment rate for construction workers in America, is now down to 4.6%. Not because we've been adding jobs in construction in the last few months, but because construction workers are leaving the industry. The data are consistent with the notion that as other sectors continue to add jobs, whether wholesale trade, or other segments of the economy are adding jobs, construction workers are leaving the industry. Construction, after all, is hard work. And the industry has, for many years, under-recruited younger workers. If you ask corporate CFOs, CFOs, chief financial officers in construction, what's your number one concern? It has been for many years, we can't find workers. We can't find carpenters, we can't find electricians. And when more and more construction workers leave the industry, that's problematic. Because ultimately, what does it do? It translates into higher construction labor costs. For the past couple of years, the industry has been hearing a lot about big glass. It was also an important session at GlassCon Global. Dirk Schulte of APG International moderated this panel discussion that covered logistics, quality control, and assurance. So we're here speaking with Josh Kerwin with Joseph Gartner USA, and we just finished a big panel discussion on big oversized glass. So as from an installer's perspective, what, are you, what do you see as some of the big um, opportunities and challenges you know, when it comes to these jumbo units? It's all, um, I mean, the success of our project has been the pre-planning uh, and working with the trades, uh, working with uh, equipment vendors, uh, in order to get our, our arms and minds around this, this big size glass. Once that's done, it's about training with the crews uh, to get that comfort, that familiarity with the, with the large size glass. Now you mentioned your project, which is the Apple campus that is under construction. What can you tell us as far as what's happening with glass on, on that project? I mean, there's, a, uh, there's a, a commitment to glass by this owner and it's exceptional. Uh, it's very high quality glass. Um, and it's, you know, it's, I mean, we see it as it's pushing the industry, but as well taking into account the, the employees themselves, because, you know, once we walk away, uh, this is their building from the get-go, uh, and it's literally the views from this building uh, and how it's been executed in that manner. It's, it will increase and improve uh, the kind of the workplace environment, so. 
There were also a handful of exhibitors at GlassCon, and we checked in with some of them to see what they thought about the show. It's a nice blend of bringing academia, uh, the business side of it, and, um, and the A&E community together. Um, just enough technical and then real practical, uh, innovative uh, topics that were covered. And um, I think as far as uh, presenting, um, you know, we, had, we had a topic that we covered on uh, retrofits. Um, I think that was well received. We also had the tabletop here, which lent itself nice uh, during the networking sessions to not only talk to our, our uh, potential clients and, uh, and the architectural community about the products and their capabilities, but you know, bring them over and, uh, and let them see and, and touch and feel you know, the difference that a warm edge spacer can make. You know, show them actual examples of the product, and, uh, and I think that was helpful. We were interested in seeing what other countries are doing in terms of what technologies they're applying um, to glass and to facades. And I thought it was important to be here because a lot of the colleagues and customers and even consultants that we work with are going to be here. And it's a good networking and learning experience for everybody in the industry. That brings us to the end of this year's GlassCon Global video coverage. Be sure and look to USGNN for more news and reports. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Ellen Rogers. And I'm Nick St. Dennis.